Good morning, fans. Privateer FX. Coming at you on a Monday here, August 10th. It begins. This is, um, I would say, close to the most important couple weeks of the year. Usually it's the beginning of um, a strong trending period. Oftentimes it's tumultuous. Um, so even though we're going in like a lamb, um, we should come out of this like a lion one way or the other. Uh, you could see a vaccine uh, and then inflation is your is your beast of burden. Or you could see this pandemic uh, blow up a bit and just cash flows, catch up with the world. Um, that's your beast of burden scenario too. Uh, so now we're just waiting to, to let price confirm one way or the other. Friday we were talking about uh, S&Ps and ex-girlfriends. Um, shit's bad, shit's stubborn. Market is still short, obviously. It just does not go down well. That's fine. Um, we're square here. Eyes looking both ways, right? Um, obviously, 3,400 is huge. Should be resistance going into that. Certainly, first time up as a sell, especially after all of these up days, getting very, very stretched. So one thing you could do today is stretch sell um, between sort of 87 and 97. That's a, sort of a tactical trade today. But a daily close above 3,400, um, especially if it's vaccine driven, is interesting. We still favor the downside, but we're open-minded uh, to the upside. One of the secondary consequences of this whole thing is this thing does sort of like scream higher uh, and vaccine comes, bonds are going to turn very, very hard. So this is now we have to start watching these fixed income instruments. Um, there's many reasons bonds can turn. There's sort of the risk on reason, rotation of capital, but it's not really something that I'm that I'm uh, worried about per se because I don't think there's much. I don't think there's tons of money rotating into bonds at the moment. I think it's just the Fed who's buying bonds. Who the fuck would buy a 10-year uh, U.S. Treasury with a 50 basis point yield? Um, you know, obviously insurance companies and they're forced buyers just like the boons, just like the negative yielding stuff in Europe. You ask yourself the question, who is buying this? Uh, and then if you ask long enough, you get the answer, who's buying it? It's you know, German insurance companies, pension funds um, that have programs that they have to be balanced. They have to have a certain fixed income. It has to have a certain credit rating. Uh, people who are hiding from uh, short-term rates of minus 80 basis points think that boons at minus 50 um, are a good deal. Uh, so anyway, I don't think there's like this huge safe haven bit here. I think this is just forced buying plus government buying um, that makes it here. So obviously if the government stops buying because there's a vaccine or things have turned around, this will be the first thing they do. They're not going to raise interest rates. But they'll stop buying uh, bonds at the long end. And if this does happen... Uh, bonds are going to turn. Which leads me to another segue, actually. We were thinking long and hard about why the fuck Buffett is buying all this B of A stock. Um, one of the secondary consequences of the secondary consequences is if bonds do uh, collapse and the yield curve does steepen, uh, voila, U.S. banks will do very well. Maybe that's what he's thinking. Maybe he's not thinking at all. He's just buying assets and shit that he knows and, and shit that he's comfortable with. But it did dawn on me this morning um, that if bonds do go down, financial assets or you know banking stocks uh, will go higher. So this is all something to think about. 
um, going into this week. Obviously, super quiet now. S and P's are at 52. Bonds haven't moved for ages. Um, you know, we're a half a point range for the last 10 days here, sort of at these tops. Looks like she's kind of turning. Um, Got to keep a close eye on this. Let's go to gold for a second because we had a big fucking spooky bearish day um, on non-farms. 50 was the waterfall point. 47 and a half the high today. Um, you can sell these through the lows, oddly. Um, just got to, you can just keep it tight. This market is this market is very very crowded. Uh, you saw the price action on Friday. It got a little bit spooky um, in the 30s, and then all of a sudden that moved to 23. It was like, huh? Um, watch for spooky price action in gold, and don't fight it. You know, if there's a mass run for the exit, just try and profit from it. Um, that said, there is a massive, um, you know, uptrend in the making. But if there's a vaccine uh, and the safe haven gold bid dissipates, and more importantly, if the fiscal gold bid dissipates, if the balance sheet starts to be reduced quickly, um, gold is going to gold's going to take a little Pulp Fiction action. Uh, so be aware. Uh, and selling through the lows now in gold with a tight stop. <clears throat> Got to look around and see how, what price is telling you. But if price gets hysterical in gold, um, selling low ones works. So keep an eye. Keep an eye on gold. Bitcoin up at 12,000. Um, we like Bitcoin higher kind of no matter what, just kind of want to own Bitcoin. We're using dollar cost averaging now. Um, technicals don't seem to work. I don't understand the price action in Bitcoin. I can't trade it over the weekend. Um, so it's basically like owning a stock for me. Um, and you can't leverage it. You can't smash it. You don't buy through highs or sell through lows or you don't care about trend lines or any of this shit. It's just an asset um, that we like going forward. Um, with the positioning of, say, a stock, you know, versus currencies where you can leverage, leverage the Christ out of it and manage the risk. Uh, Bitcoin is not one of those assets. Speaking of currencies, very, very quiet. You can see Euro had a big down day on Friday. All of uh, the dollar was bid against everything on Friday. Not much of a rebound. Is this a big turn? I don't think so. Um, you know, we just have to see how this week proceeds. Like I say, e even though it's super quiet now on this Monday, we're every single person in Europe that I know is on vacation uh, this week, which I find kind of amusing, especially some of these old timers like myself, like, take your vacation in July. Why? Why are you taking your vacation in August when you know, historically, this is the time where shit starts to move? Um, anyway, the Sterling Yen chart, technically speaking, is kind of interesting about as interesting as it was up at 139 and that was a waste of time but downside here uh, 137 and three quarters if we do get a turn some bad news out of the UK or we do get some sort of risk off sentiment which we do not have right now uh, this could be interesting down here 137.75 uh, Euro Swiss Weirdly, I get asked the most about this currency pair from so many people. Uh, don't trade it. It's just a waste of time. It's dead. The volatility sucks. Yes, the SMB is buying. Not They're not buying here. Uh, no, there's no global conspiracy uh, driving this trade. No, 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 no. 
it's just there's one guy who owns 800 billion of this shit so it can't really go up too well um, but on the same token looks like he'll buy up to infinity for now down at 105 so it can't really go down too well um, don't think this is going to end well um, as in I, my suspicion is this this goes through parity and goes to 95 but it's just not worth trading uh, unless there's a line in the sand drawn at 105 which is unclear if there is so just ignore it for now Aussie big bearish engulfer on um, on Friday this looks interesting as a confirmation through 43 if we get risk off or if gold starts plummeting um, Aussie tends to react pretty well with gold Kiwi same chart as you can imagine bang uh, dollar cad less so so we're just watching price now we're watching the news flow we're watching the vaccine news uh, and we're watching bonds gold getting ready for some action this week in like a lamb out like a lion uh, this is the mentality you have to use this week very very quiet here as far as opening new positions on a tactical level um, on a long-term level uh, we just have the Bitcoin um, and also dollars are actually so quickly dollars are uh, this hasn't changed your parameters have to be pretty wide if you're getting involved up here um, but we do think Czar and Turkey uh, and probably Russia, Brazil, all of emerging markets uh, who are so susceptible to cash flow crises, cash flow disease. This is uh, Ebola. Lack of cash flow is Ebola for emerging markets. Um, this will catch up with them. And even if the West starts coming out of this, uh, I just don't see any huge rush of capital into the emerging markets right now. Um, these are the weakest hands. These are the weakest healthcare systems. Um, doesn't look good. So we're short czar. Um, we're just going to sit with that for now. Anyway, said enough. Uh, good luck out there, people. Talk to you uh, tomorrow.